There you go. That's Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time for Victor Allen's New News Sport. Hot, sexy. Today's Neil Urban Look at Sports, produced, written, and directed by Victor Allen, the one the ladies call sexual chocolate. And without further ado, here's Vic. Oh, man, I got some claps. Welcome, dude. I got to give you yeah. four. You know, I usually don't get no claps on New News Sports, man. I just get silence. And the scream. I'll take it. <laughs> hey, you guys, before, this is the one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you what we're going to be. It's going to be our lead topic here at New News Sports. And then we're going to go into the trending sports topics as well. But I'm going to tell you right now, will Tim Tebow, I yeah. want y'all to understand yeah. this, will Tim Tebow echo in divine <laughs> intervention? When the Broncos play the Patriots. We're going to talk about that. Why y'all go? It's not. He even said it's not even about that. He even they asked me. him about that. He said God doesn't. What, are you y'all jumping, trying to pay Are Tim, you jumping ahead of my Because you're a subject? Tim Tebow hand. I'd like Tim Tebow. Not in the beginning. Oh, no, no. You no, were kind of no, neutral. No, 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 no. I wasn't. But, hey, you know what they say, Mario. People all just right. step in front of you all day and tell you what they are capable of doing. But until they're on the field of play, you go, hmm. Well, Tom, Tom, tiny Tom. <laughs> all right. Let me give you the trending topics that's happening. Of course, Tim Tebow, the most, oh, I guess you most popular sports figure right now, bar none. And he Tebows the Chicago Bears. And everybody watched this. It wasn't as much as Tim Tebow. As it was, the Ch- Chicago Bears just faltering. Also, Lakers owed him, traded to the Mavericks. Once he heard the news about what was happening, he said, let me just say, trade me. Let's take it to Eli Manning. That's a Manning. nice fit, I think. Wait, wait, till you, wait, till okay. you, wait till you get What are we going to get What that? did they get for wait, him? Wait, wait, wait. No, hold on. Okay, okay. This is the part that I'm trying right, to right. get the top. See, Mario's already. See, I'm Mar- excited He's now. a gangster. Yeah. <laughs> He's a gangster on the sports. All right, Eli Manning. Oh. When you say he hit the, 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 the Cowboys defense and roped them, well, here we in December again. Dallas doesn't do well. And here we are, Eli Manning. He's, he's an elite quarterback. The Xavier Cincinnati game. Okay, I got to, you know, like I said, somebody's son is going to go down in infamy mm. with saying, mm. we're gangsters, but we're not hoodlums. Mm. And also, the NBA marketplace, because trading is going crazy we just haven't got the recent updates but i can tell you right now the names that's out there recently it's been tyson chandler gone chris paul still in the mix lamar odom paul gasol nobody else is out there who's ringing and ringing down what we call controversial trades at so far so before we go any further mario i you, you hit the nail on the head when you said you know tim tebow he's not doing in, divine intervention but what do you call it when all these certain conditions in football, on the field of play happen around him when the man's quarterback efficiency is 13% in the first half, 36 yards passing, and they win against the Chicago Bears, the vaunted defense? Do you see that Denver will now take down Brady and the Patriots next week? Well, I don't know, but I think it'll be a good game. I think the issue really, there's a couple of issues that everybody's acknowledging. One, it's not so much... The New England New England offense we're worried about is that defense. Their offense is, and this is even though you look at Green Bay, they're still gonna going undefeated right. with with a, with a situation that's right somewhat analogous, somewhat at least a super strong offense. Deep is not quite up to par, but doing way better with that. Right. But damn, if the Patriots don't look weak in the defense, at least you want to go after them, right? Yes, sir. But can you stop them from scoring? Uh, you may not be able you to may stop. Not be able you to may not be able to stop. To. You know, the question becomes, and, and and I say this all the time. I said, you know, when it gets down to it, all New England cares about is winning the Super Bowl. But in the meantime, we're going to stay around Tim Tebow. When you see the efficiency level at a quarterback level, we can all break down the statistic. But Mario, you're from the real world. You say if you deliver, you deliver. I don't have. It has to, get to do the with ball. the winning spirit. And let me. And, and okay, if you see people, they're starting now to break it down into the specifics that make it easier for them to understand because people feel like they need to understand, even though I always have. Right. For example, they talk about what happens when, he, when he's under pressure, mm-hmm. his calmness under pressure. Right. See, those are things that people didn't look at at first because right. so well, they're looking at other things first to see if you can complete. Right. But your ability to stay calm in moments of extreme pressure, he seems to be impervious to the stress. Right. Doesn't seem to embrace the stress. He seems to know how to make himself above the moment. Yes. And that's a skill set that's totally, totally right. necessary. In other words, they talk about a quarterback needing to be able to forget the last bad pass. Yes. 
he seems certainly to be on, able to do, to have that kind of a thing. So I think that's the issue. But you know, it's, I agree. It's not fair to say it's all Tim Tebow. You know, Dick can went crazy on one of the shows about this. It's a team. It's a team. But there is the way that people impact other folks, and you know, I can just see how the kid can be impacting some of the old guys. Who said, you know. Sometimes someone like this can remind you why you even did this in the beginning. Yeah, I you mean, know, it, I mean, there's there's that kind hey, of a thing. Hey, look, we we talk about it all day long. There's a reason why they actually assign a captain and a leader to the team. There are certain things that they have these intangibles that moves everybody, and that's what they want. Almost e- we know every team has a captain. They have to because they want the mobilizing force. That's like Ray Lewis. If you take Ray Lewis off the Baltimore Ravens for the last 10 years, would they still be the Ravens? I would hesitate to say that they probably would have the talent, but would they have the central focus of having a defense that you always are in fear of? Pittsburgh Steelers the same way. So let me just say this, Martin. When you look at this picture of Tim Tim Tebow, doesn't this look like, you know, if you roll down for me a little bit on the picture here, doesn't this look like a man who's going against all odds? Every, I mean, look at that facial expression. And here's the part that I'm... I, I'm that's not the first <laughs> Wait a thoughts that came out of my mind <laughs> okay, seeing this picture. Well, what comes out of your mind? I say it's hit, he's getting his thigh, he's getting kneed in the face. He, that's what I'm saying. And here's the part. You know, you listen to it. They got a show, of course. ESPN got a show, a guy named Skip. And everybody, he, he talks about how they should play Tim Tebow. But, Mario, you come from football and you also know this. You can't... Everybody knows that in the fourth quarter when a team is leading, they play prevent defense. Defense means that you back off of what you've been playing most of the game to protect against the condition of the clock and the yards to be gained. But you can't play that type of fourth quarter play in the beginning of the game because the teams are not playing uh, prevent defense. And two, higher risk when you play that let me shotgun it down the field, just go at its higher risk. Would you say moving forward with Tim Tebow, is it better for him to play the way he's playing now, more conservative, maintaining the game, get them into the fourth quarter, or take the fourth quarter play style that makes them or gets them winning games and do that at the beginning of the game? Or w- which decision you find that probably will be more effective? I mean, it, the, the obvious answer is for everybody to do their best at all the time. But he doesn't control the offense. He doesn't call the plays. So right. he's not in command at all. Right. So so he has limited capacity to even address that question. That would be a question more suited for the coaching staff in terms of what plays. Right. But it, but but all I'll say is I remember in the beginning where everybody said that he couldn't run any offensive plays. Right. That they couldn't that it was all so limited. So right. I wonder it seemed like I don't hear that <laughs> as loud as I used to hear that. There you go. I wonder what happened to those people. Oh, their mouth is all gooey. <laughs> With the taste of bullshit are you, clogging up their teeth. Are you teeth. keeping somebody in mind as you look at them? <laughs> There's a, a bunch of folks <laughs> out there who just totally have been wrong about this the whole time. Right. And I said that they were wrong. Right. Because to me, it's so, it's so... You know what I'm... It, you know, then at the same time they get done, they switch to another story like Drew Brees. Right. It doesn't need totally the same thing, mm-hmm. too short, right. all of that stuff. Right. But yet he's leading, too. Right. See, there's a, there's so many examples of this. Right. One of my favorites I refer to, Fran Tarkenton, was not supposed to make it either. Well, they use that example. These, uh, they use that example as the first guy, as you look at smallish, 5'10", 5'11", who would scurry around the field. And I remember him playing against the Rams and in the playoffs. I said, this guy is really the forerunner of Joe Montana. Maybe not the Montana-like quarterback, but he was already running around the field a lot. And they said, well, back then they had no complaints about it. They questioned it, but he became the quarterback for how many years? It depended on what you talk. And again, I remember the issues that surrounded him. Right. But those did surround him, and as did it with other quarterbacks right. who were felt to be too small. Okay. And this went on all of these what you're not supposed to be, and I've, that's why to me I've always said yeah, yeah, whatever, <laughs> because <laughs> right. it's the same old shit all the time, right. and there's too many examples. Ronnie Lott, right. Marcus Allen, all these people right. didn't have supposedly enough physical 
skill to make it, yet they excelled. Right. How did that happen? Right. Let, okay. let, me, let me say now, before we go on to the second part of this, just to remind you guys, when we get a subject like this, it's going to fit in a category. We're going to either put it in what we call our own category of balling, let down, upset, whatever, big pimping, and for the ladies. And so every time we put up Tim Tebow, it seems like he's always coming out either for the ladies or big pimping. We haven't had any conditions. No, balling. He's got ball. I gave him balling. Well, you gave him balling. All right. Balling, balling. He does balling, yeah. He, yeah, he balls. He balls. And, and big pimping makes, includes all of it. As the ladies, Milan Phillips and them say, you know, big pimping includes all these categories. You like that, one? You don't know, because Tim Tebow is anything but big pimping. <laughs> Why not, man? Because he's, he's going to get what the girl says. Have you heard the word of Jesus today? Uh, okay, so here we <laughs> so, go. Here we go. So I'm just saying, he ain't big pimping. <laughs> He's big. That, let's go to the next not, one. <laughs> and I don't even know if that's for the ladies. He's for mom and dad and apple pie. He's big pimping. When he's back there and that's okay. when he's back and everybody's going, you're a gangster, man. He's, he's a big smiling. pimping in a very white bread sort of way. Okay, there you go. There, you know what? You just <laughs> like take Pat it back, Boone on a hot, like Pat Boone was big pimping. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know about Pat Boone. Who are you talking about? That's out of my time. Man. All right, you guys. Here's the other question because Justin everybody Bieber. saw this. We saw a comedy of faux pas, errors, whatever you want to come as it relates to the Chicago Bears. Who do you blame for the Bears' loss? Now, I know people go like, you don't have to blame, you don't have to blame, but there were some things that just you don't do. When you look at Mickey Barber, you had to stop and say, okay, game over. There's no such thing as when if you take that running handoff, stop, go down, clock runs out, game over. Who do you blame that the offense was not expected to do much because Cutler's got a replacement in Haney? Or do you actually say, Lovey Smith, the defense did a good job, but not good enough. The defensive coordinator, was it the entire team, or was it just the gift of Tebow, Mario, that made this outcome a win? Because it's just a win. I know it's a gift to Tebow, because they had a, I saw a field goal kicker win the game. <laughs> <laughs> so I keep going. How they keep? Going. He did his part. What, you know what? Uh, what about Lovey Mickey Smith? What I about think, Mickey Barber? You, that whole thing that just go down. That's well. That's um. You can't no. make that in this no. league. No, and so, but you got to be coached. Maybe there was. I don't know. But 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 besides, there's always these individual events that are bad, and then there's the overall approach. You know, and I'm not sure that Lovey Smith. Is again, this is the same issue I've had with him over and over. Yes, you have. I, I think he, I'm not sure how he does as an administrator. Right. His, whether or not, how, to what degree they delegate. Right. Uh, but ultimately, he's the one running the thing. Yeah. And so I hold him kind of responsible. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I'm right there. The part that got me is that the defense, Chicago did their defense. You're talking about basically a, score, a scoreless first half. They did what they were supposed to do. And typically, they're doing the best they can. Tiki, I'm not Tiki. Mickey Barber not only fumbled at an untimely air time, right. and the clock thing. They can understand the fumble, but the clock thing where everybody knew. That's what got me. I said I tried to excuse him. I said you don't. They all know we got this. We can run the clock out. I think he just got caught up in a moment. I think everybody clearly knew. Yeah, he forgot. He just forgot. He got caught. He up forgot. In a moment. It's not thinking. Yes, it's not. It's called not thinking. It's called dumb dumb move. <laughs> <laughs> now we all do them. Now we all have done them. Right. We all have done and them. And you feel for this but guy. But yours is on national television. Yeah, and let me say this. I mm. like Mickey Barber. He's a runner. He's yeah. strong. This is his moment that he has to live with because he knew it. And you know yeah. what, Mario? Here's the part that everybody's saying. They're going, you saw the wind of the sail changing. You can see Mickey sitting there going, they're about to score a touchdown. They're going to score a field goal. All the things that happened to him, it was like, why is this happening to me? And we felt for him. I felt for him because he's a good running back. Yeah, solid. he is. All right, you guys. He made a boo-boo. <laughs> he made a big one. All right, we're going to go over to the next one. There's a problem at the L.A. Staples Center. And let me say this. You know, Lamar Odom wears his emotions on his sleeve. He is considered by Kobe Bryant one of the motivational leaders in the Lakers locker room. And on the team. So this is not a silent cat who basically is like, I don't say that much. But he clearly got the message when he says, I don't want to be in a place where they don't want me. So after the Paul, Chris Paul thing fell through, he asked to be uh, for a request to be traded. With that, here's, the qu here's, here's what's happening. 
They traded him to the team that swept them in the playoffs. Great move. <laughs> okay. Great before, move. Before. Good living place. <laughs> Wait a minute. Great Contending. for who? It's Lamar. He's going to be on a contender. Supposedly one of the most livable cities in the U.S., you know, um, not that far from here, really. I well, mean, but put it in basketball terms. It's a Why? great move for Lamar. What did they get for him? Two draft picks, first round draft picks, I believe. Okay, that's about it. But so wait, wait, we say that's a bit, but there's some nice stuff. There's some nice. Well, you know, you get, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're going to get some cash stuff, but they couldn't drop any names. There were no other players well, I mean, involved. But even with two first round draft picks, this draft this year looking kind of good. Yeah, but that's building for the future. And and Dallas, yeah. see, the part that everybody's looking at right now is that number one, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Actually, he is a friendly. So you have to look at this guy now and say you will be hating on them because this is the I team won't. that knocked. I knocked won't. you up. I I'm, won't. Well, of course, Mar. We not. No, no, because yeah. Vic, Vic, I'm saying this. I think here's where I'm a little different. I'm a little more open and hopeful with what the Lakers are building. I, I am just a little different. I'm not feeling the negative. Right. Even though I think people are, ah, 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 they're, right. they're panicking. I am not. Right. I'm not panicking. I'm mostly waiting to see. You know, you and I talked about it. I actually think these daring moves is what Lee. they needed to do. Yeah, they course. needed to let Lamar go. Right. I like Lamar. Right. I'm actually happy that he went to Dallas, because I feel like I got a win-win. When he's Oregon, gone from the Lakers, but and I like him, he's and he's to. in a good to a spot. Right. I'm happy. I right. want to see what the Lakers do, Vic. I'm really excited well, about this. I'm I, not I'm not down on none of this. Let me say this, because when you clear out space and you see things happening, for example, Powell and Bynum are the only people left on the team that you can really leverage to trade. And Powell was and looking right. different right. last year, we said. Right, and, and not looking good. That's what we said, yeah. so I agree with both of so these. So here's a part. I agree. I think, to me, Lamar is above and beyond that because he's already got his championship, and I think he likes being out here in L.A. And let me just say this. Yeah. Because he got the reality show. He's got everything. Yeah. This is comfort zone. So right. he's still going to a winning organization, but everybody's going Mark like this. Mark Cuban on Brace, his celebrity. Let me, let me, Mar, you hit it. But here's the other part. They say when you trade a primetime player like that to your, with your team that right. is kind of like your right. enemy – to me, that means a bigger move is in store. Because well, you yeah, just don't because get, you, it's in, on the Lakers' behalf. No, but, Vic, I agree with you. But remember, they say you don't do that because it inspires them to do good. No, right. I think what's happening is these players have peaked. So I don't mind him going. Right. I'm saying I'm fully aware of the whole thing about trading to the people. Right. And I never agreed with that anyway, right. personally. Right. I just thought it was bullshit. I right. think you play, you just play. It is make blah, 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 whether you see him again, this and that, whatever. Right. If you're supposed to be a pro, you're a pro. Yeah. But so I don't have an issue with that. I don't have an issue, like I said, with any of this. Yeah. I'm just looking forward for the see with the Lakers. And, I'm actually excited. I may root for them more, maybe yeah. a little bit more with, with Mike Brown as the coach yeah. and with the new team. I just can't wait to see. There's some, well, there's some good-looking people to bring in instead of Lamar. Well, here's the other part. We'll see who they bring in because there is a void now, and there's, yeah. there's going to be a void. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and so the part Got that's a clear taken, space. And let me say this, just so you guys know this. Uh, the Clippers already cleared space as it relates to DeAndre Jordan, who's a, like their center, a small center. He's gone to Golden State, and he's got a $42 million deal. So already, what I'm bringing this around to, and everybody knows this, Chris Paul already said, if I'm not at the New York Knicks, my first choice outside of that, because of Lakers, I didn't get that, is either Knicks or I'm going to Clippers. That's where I want to go. And right now, since Tyson Chandler's already at New York, they spent their money for Tyson, that leaves the Clippers because he says, I want to play with B. Griffin. With that in mind, I said, well, if Paul is going there and we already traded away Lamar, then that means the only way you're going to get D. Howard because if the Lakers don't get anyone, they're not better this year. And you can't, I'm sorry, you can't look at Ron Artest. You can't look at Jason Capono, who we just got also. When I say we, the Lakers, that's kind of one of those outside shooters off the bench. So if they don't make any moves at all, it's not a good thing at all. It's not as productive. But they got to make fixed. some moves, but they got to fill out the roster. And the Dwight Howard thing is on and cracking. So here's my question to you. Where do you think D. Howard is going to end up? Because he already said, I want out. It's official now. He completely made it official. I'm out of Orlando. I gave them everything I could. It's either Jersey or L.A. Where do you see it leaning towards? Jersey. You are the Lake or hater. <laughs> no, no, because I think they're more committed to getting him. Think so? The Russian billionaire who wants to run against Putin. Yeah, yeah even though I think the Lakers want a bad. You think, well, how committed do you think the Lakers are? Oh, big. I think. The, I think. I we, think they're. I think. But I, are they more committed than that? Let Russian? me say that they got Deron Williams. 
they are already giving up some players to show that they're in a rebuilding phase. Yeah, that's what I said. He's com- I think he wants him bad. And he's right. going to offer. He's he's going to offer more money, but than the Lakers are going to offer with a team that still needs to have a lot of other parts around it. Here's the man saying, "I have Hollywood because I do already do the." You Hollywood have to thing. give Dwight Howard a deal like Magic, you have where to he give, gets part and, of the Lakers. And let me just say this, you guys: I'm not trying to say it happens this way. With the exception of Benoit Benjamin and Eldon Campbell, every big man that's come through L.A. that you consider a icon or close to top five, top ten big man has won an NBA championship. Why not stop here if he wants a championship? What does he? What's more important? Building starting anew in New Jersey and waiting to well, see. Well, you're still saying A plus B equals Z on that. <laughs> Just because he comes here doesn't mean it's going to be a championship. You know, Mario, There's your objectivity records. But you let's want to just talk say, I would love to see Dwight Howard here. Yeah. I would love to see that. It changes uh, the game. I just don't know where this is going, you guys. I have no idea. I wish I knew the inside stuff right. and how committed people are. But I know this. Right. I have said, you heard me say it twice already. I'm enjoying yeah. and appreciating the moves that the Lakers are doing. Yes. I actually think you you know that I don't know what the salaries are like. Right. You know, our, to me, our test might have to go depending upon what his salary is. Or maybe not if his salary's not bad. Right. But he's definitely a bench player. Yeah. So now you're talking about the bench, which is the bench is. Or he moves to a bench t- player because well, he's a starter. It gives you a strong bench now, at least. You know what I'm saying? Because he's a starter. No, well, maybe he still might be, but it may not be because it may, I don't know. Okay. So the thing is, at least you have a strong, I see a strong Laker bench. Right. As these people move to the bench. Right. Because I think you're going to be using some of the newer people as the starters, Vic. I think you're going to go get another starting they have power to. forward. They have to. They have no choice. If they don't get D. Howard, they better get somebody because it's going to be a Too board. bad they didn't get Tyson. That's who I wanted. I know. Tyson's the man. That's who I wanted. Defensive, going to New York. Okay, here, here's my question going. For, I'll say this. Not a question. I think Lamar Odom is going to be even better because of the style of play in Dallas. He yes. won't have to play the, uh, the, the pyramid or whatever yes. you want to call it, the Phil Jackson scheme. It was free-flowing. And yes. Lamar is better flowing. Yes. So I'm going with him as saying he's going he's to going be. He's going to have a rejuvenated He's, going, he's year. going to be the new enemy of the Lakers yes. because he's now known that they play and practice a certain way. And you're going to see his talents. And I think it's going to be similar to when he played with D. Wade. And I've seen when they had that flow. Or I saw whether he had that flow up and down. It was unbelievable. I just don't know if it's the new enemy of the Lakers. That you're still, he's still going to a team that, even if he wasn't there, right. was going to be the real big enemies of the Lakers. They swept them. That's right. So they're going to be the enemies of the Lakers. Yeah, because you just when you trade, when you have a comfort zone of trading yeah. to them. That's say something else is in the wind in, that you guys are doing. If if you know what, and here's the thing, though. See, this is why another thing. If Lamar was the kind of person in the past who could use these kind of things to motivate himself, then he got it. Then he got it. But yeah. he's really not. So I don't expect him to you. I don't expect Lamar to come back with any "Ooh, I'm playing the Lakers, uh, rah so. rah." Because I, I expect I so rarely saw him do that anyway. Right. That if he manages to get that up, it ain't gonna be long lasting. Right. Because that ain't him. Yeah. It ain't been I him think, his whole career. I think the part that's gonna happen here is that he says, you know, because of who he is, I think the style. He may of get play. a little mad for a little minute. <laughs> he he don't get real mad. <laughs> He, 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 Dwight, you know, they kind of, they not them cats. They don't get real mad and, rrr, you know. I it's know, not, I know. It, I it know. ain't happening it's like not, that. It's not, it's not, that, no, they don't lead that no. way. It's a different thing. It okay, is, dude. let me just say, I agree, I agree. But I'm wishing him well. Yeah. You wishing him well? Oh, no, I think, I know it. Look, I think uh, right offhand. I'm wishing gr- him well. It's a great trade. I'm saying when I look at the basketball operation, I'm not in the room and I'm going, everybody knows this. They said. Ownership and other teams do not try to trade players to the Lakers to make them better when they're already the top team. They right. try to avoid that. Right. When you do that with Dallas, I said, that means there's an inside track on something. You're going, wait till the next no, move. No, no, no. But if you think that, if that's what you think happens, I don't think that's what has happened, nor do I really think the other one. I think it's, it's a deal. It's not just a, like it's something under the table. Well, you got to get something for it. Okay. Well, they just, got two first round draft choices. Right. And I'm saying that they're based, building younger. So you Well, I'm just saying, based on what I've been watching, you may have some nice choices based on that mm. two first-round draft choice. Yeah, yeah, and, and look, 
that's a future thing. Well, that's what I'm saying. And, and, but thing. the whole move is a future yeah, thing. Yeah, it is. The whole convergence. So that, well, it fits. Lakers is doing it. It's, right. it. it's either this. You're trying to get a championship while you have the next few years with Kobe. I think they're trying to get another championship within the next year or two. And usually first-year players, even rookies, coming out and recruit, they really don't get, you know, you know they don't get their 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 energy up, their ex- expertise, and everything. It takes them a few years, so I think they're trying to get another one quickly. And well, they they, well you could always trade the depth. The point is, they at least have some flexibility. Yeah. But no, but 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 either way, no offense to me, no offense. Uh, you ain't getting the championship because first of all, well, you maybe you. I think you'll make a decent run. Very much a, d- a problem asking a team to gel in one year. Yeah. And this is enough change. I know. You're asking, this is almost like what they asked of, you know. Miami. Yeah, exactly. And it's hard to get to them the to the jail in one year. And, but they took them all the way to the place and they were just Oh, one yeah, game. they'll get you to the playoffs. Yeah. I just don't see the Lakers building a team strong enough to me to contend. I'm actually looking around now. And who is going to be the people? I don't see the Lakers. Right. You know, I don't see the Lakers winning the West. So I told you, I said that too. I think Magic said that. Even with uh, D. Howard? Even with D. Howard. I'm going to hold you to that, man. No, because I, I don't know what they're going to need a lot more than just D. Howard. I don't know. And that's where I don't know. See, it, it all depends on to what degree they're able to pull these wily veterans. Right. Or again, Vic, like I said, if they get the right rookies. Yeah. There are some people that kind of look good yeah. coming out, and I have a little more hope, even though they're rookies. I, <laughs> rookie, I know, even though dude, they're rookies. Nah, it's just the nah, Chicago. Nah. You have so many other teams that are going to do. You know, like I said, first of all, I already said the Knicks are going to challenge right. again differently. You have right. a bunch of other stuff that's yeah. coming. Yeah, I know. We all see the one thing we did see in the NBA playoffs that all, the teams, the final fours, when you saw who had to step up, it all went down to the season players. You know, you had maybe an exception like a D. Rose who already was in the league maybe a year, going into second, moving to his third year. But everybody else has some years under their belt. And mm-hmm. so the thing about it is we know experience wins. Knicks go look good I'm as a you. challenger. It's not Boston right now. The East, no, Boston. isn't it the Knicks right yeah. now? Yeah, and you know Big Baby's gone. No. Yes, man. When did that happen? They just said a week ago how they was keeping him and all this. <laughs> I forgot where they traded him. They traded him already, man. I forgot the team. I tweeted on it, and I can't remember who they t- oh, traded him. Geez. So Big Baby's gone. I didn't gone. know that. Yeah, so I'm okay, just Okay, but like I said to me, in the East, the Knicks, you guys, I waited to get Chauncey Billups. He, That's not bad. You know, how about him on the Lakers? Yeah. See? I don't see. Yeah, but, I, but, but, but. I, mm. I think it's, oh, come mm. on. I think he may be a good deal. I think Chauncey Billups right now is going to be a good deal for somebody. Yeah. I mean, you're going to get him for a reasonable price, get one more year out of him. Well, if they have to one pick or up, two, if they have to pick up that contract, because New York said it was a, it was really a money thing because yeah. he he owed 14 million or something like that. that's a lot of money, man, for somebody's already plus 30 something. It's a lot of money. Good pro oh, won't yeah. hurt you. All right, you guys, going to go to the one thing that Mario loves the best. He loves his Dallas Cowboys as much as he loves the America's Los Angeles, team. <laughs> Los, Los Angeles Lakers. I do not love them. Yeah, of course, don't, don't brand don't, me. I like Tony <laughs> Romo, though. Oh, wait, now here's the thing. We already know that there's a reputation going on as it relates to Dallas, and they were blaming to- Tony Romo most of it because they say in December he tends to falter. But let's just be real. Tony has stepped up as it relates to the proficiency exactly. and efficiency in uh, the top. He's probably like in the top six in the quarterback rating. So he's doing a good job, and let me just say this. He did a good job yesterday. I'm not saying he did great he did above and beyond. The problem became is that th- this was a deci- decisions <coughs> made for a number of reasons, drop balls on both sides. You've seen a lot of things that weren't consistent from Dallas to prove that they are an upper echelon team. Now, here's my question. Dallas Cowboys shows true colors with the defeat by the elite quarterback, because everybody's saying this now, Eli Manning. Is an elite quarterback. He is. He is an elite quarterback. And I, I say it too. I said he's proven himself on your home field. Now, why can't Dallas get over the hump of frustration in December? Is this a Rob Ryan issue? Because the de- defense don't look that hot, Mario. I hate to say this. He's known as the defensive guru. What's happening with Dallas? Man? You know, aspects of it, aspects of it. And I don't know if it's the coaching or the players. You know, certain aspects of Dallas look so good. How about that front four and their ability to change up and bring the different rush patterns? But but you also had some problems in the secondary. Right. 
Um, you know, I don't know what I, I hate. I certainly don't think it's Tony Romo. No, it's not. And I also think there's some issue with the coaching. You know, they've had okay, okay. They at least have had some mental coaching errors. Right. So those stand out when you get those uh, mental coaching errors. Right. That come up and have come up. And also, they also, the way they came up seemed to indicate that there's a problem with communication. True. Where Tony Romo didn't know or didn't feel comfortable taking the lead. It looked bad in terms of mm-hmm. the organizational approach of how you handle certain situations. I agree. Looked uncoached. I agree. At a moment there. Okay. Okay. Now, here's my question. Now, I'm going to take it down to this because they, they didn't strip this off. I think the timing is everything. I think there's a, a, a synergy. I think the team that they were looking forward to seeing is the team that pulled it out against the San Francisco 49ers when they did the comeback, Tony Romo injured with the ribs. They showed that they were coming. And now this team has lost against the Arizona Cardinals last week. Can't even explain that, more. I don't. This is the part where you go, how do you explain that? How do you go from that? Somebody wanted it more. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Lack but, of morale. Yeah, but I... Failure but, to but get the this, team motivated to perform. Uh, and, here, and I agree. And here's the other part. Now they're going against their nemesis, which says that if New York Giants, they got to play them again. And everybody said New York Giants are going to split with Dallas. Well, right now they're even. So Dallas had a good, strong hold on this division. It's going to be the New York Giants who's going to say, you have to come to my field now. And I think the part that's going to be interesting is, I said, well, forget whatever happens here. This is not the strongest division yet. We've got New Orleans over there in Green Bay. I just want to ask you the question. Which quarterback in the last two minutes of the fourth quarter between Romo and Manning would you want on three? If you had to do best three out of five drives to win the game, who would that be? Not even close. Manning. It's not even a question, is it? No. Wow. That makes sense. He's really sense. stepped up in recent years. Uh, decision making. He really matured. He's not just Peyton's younger brother anymore. Right. And uh, the level of competition that he brings. Like, you know, he's incredibly consistent in that offense yeah. now. And he, like his brother, right. he uh, really looks like he's thinking things through. He, he All does the it. process is second nature now. Right. Look like he took a little longer in development, but still has got the same genes now. Right. So his second nature thinking. Right. That's I like the way he his mechanics are wonderful, yeah. like his brother. So you have to say he's truly, you know, shown that he could do it, and he's do, leading a, in a disciplined way. And you have to say this too, also, a, relative to his brother Peyton. Didn't he didn't he win a Super Bowl faster and, than Peyton Manning did based on the years? Because Peyton has been in the in the league what thirteen fourteen years. Manning came out. It only took him how long before they won that game against the New England Patriots? That catch on homeboy's helmet to take New England out of the perfect season. So, in a Even way... Even though, once again, that was one of those things I, I don't look at because it has to do with the team, right? Yeah, well, no, I know, I'm just saying. It comes under his watch. They try, to, wanted, Im- they try to imply that that makes you a better quarterback, and I go, I don't... No, 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 I'm saying he, he has a quarterback saying, I, I have a championship, I have an NFL championship. He had the luck to be on a championship team as a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> what are you not giving them response? I'm, no, I'm just saying that people, it's amazing to me people, that people try to, that's the whole discussion they're having now as to what equals winning. Right. Is he a based, winning quarterback? Based, uh, based upon the number of games your team uh, wins or your individual performance. If you have a bad performance on a winning team, what does that say? Right. So that's part of that whole discussion. Right. I'm just saying he won a championship faster in the pros than Peyton Manning. And that's your, I, I, and I'm going, that's a team game. I, I go that to perspective. I would say the team won a championship right. faster than. No, but you know what? What, what, they, implies, what implies that he's the cause no, of no, the No, 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 no. When they are talking to the individual, if, say if you're talking to him, they'll say this. Yeah, if you've already won an NFL championship, whether it's a linebacker, running back, they're just saying you are part of the team. But you can say, I yes, I have a championship. It's an it's an I thing. It's not about I, saying I, I, I was a reason for it. But I'm saying they typically use that as a way to explain to someone being bad. Oh, I, they yeah, go, yeah. he had a he had a championship before you did. Therefore, that means he was a better quarterback. And right. that's the part I'm disputing. Oh no, I, don't I, think. I think the part I was looking at is that he didn't get the respect. I was going like they put him in the shadow of Peyton a lot. To the point where I said, you know, they made him the little brother that needed to show that he can compare to Peyton. I said, you shouldn't even do that. He just delivered. Well, I don't know that they did it. I just yeah. thought it was what occurred. He came up as the younger brother to a star. Kind of comes with that. Comes I, don't, I don't know that anybody really does that to you as much as you do it to yourself, too. Right. 
It just is going to happen. Yeah, it's, it goes with the territory. Yeah, it goes with the okay. territory. All right. Okay, you know, we're going to exit out where we say, I think the, the art form of when you call yourself a gangster, when you actually grab that mantle and, 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 and associate it with a term that is so endearing that you do it during your post interview. And all of you guys know about the Xavier Cincinnati players. Uh, you know, brawl, and that eight players were suspended. Four, I think, from uh, Cincinnati, I believe, four or six, but I believe it's equally four and four for a number of games. And Z Xavier is number eight in the nation. Now, Cincinnati got blown out by 20 something points or close to it, and it was nine seconds left in the game, and then they went buck wild, and a lot of people have already fo followed this story. So I wanted to find out something more that just says, here's the moment <laughs> you're in the interview, and I can't remember the player's name, and he says, they pick that sound bite. They know where to pick it up at and say, you know, we had to let them know they're going to push us around. You know, we're gangsters. We're gangsters. We're not hoodlums, but we're gangsters. So now you have that moniker over the university. So here it is. People are watching you during this time. Mar, you are sitting there, a parent, coach, university or whatever. He says, who would cheer or hate your quote? We are gangsters, not hoodlums. And I put some choices there. This is fun. Where you say, pretend like your mom's watching, pretend like the university's watching, your girlfriend's watching, dad is watching. Which ones are cheering and which ones are holding their face in their hands? When he says, after I get into the fight, we're gangsters. They all got their hands. It all depends on how stupid his girlfriend is. But you know what? In all in all fairness, it ha once again is one of those things where it has to do with how young folks communicate. I just don't take these things to mean anymore because I think what happens is that people my age, it take look, it, we interpret the sayings based on our age, and they clearly, clearly, right. What we're hearing and what they are saying are two different things. Oh, yeah. It means something totally different to them right. and all their group around them than it does to me and all the, my group around me. Right. On the other hand, they just need to know. But So young folks expressing themselves in stupid ways. Wow, that's new. <laughs> okay, so I'm saying so young folks typically are going to say stupid things, and many of us when we were young, would say too. It's actually what, obviously, in their generation, gangsta and hoodla mean different things. Right. And again, it has nothing to do really with what we think the word means. It's just like the N-word controversy. Right. But uh, it does result in some public uh, embarrassment. But here was so funny. Embarrassment to who? I suggest that actually the players would not end up feeling that much embarrassed, that their immediate peer group mm -hmm. won't be embarrassed, so that when they go out to the party, right. there's no one that's going to chastise them for saying that. Right. There's no one's going. They're not going to get to the local party at the university, and people will say, hey, man, what do you mean gangster hoodlum? Good. Everybody, good, when they good. go to their parties, good. when they go to, when they hang out, right. it's going to be, yeah, dude, you told it. We gangster. We so-and-so. Yeah. Right. That's what they're going to be saying. So... It matters sort of not what we think. That's why I put the <laughs> list there. My whole point was you already did it. You said the university could be the staff. It could be matters the not. conference. It matters. They're, you're saying the university doesn't feel bad about them saying the reason why we went there and had to get involved in the brawl is because of whatever reason, whether you're a gangster, it's a terminology thing, the question becomes you already identified who's going to cheer. So you already said this list. That's below that says mom, dad, coach, girlfriend, and university are not going to be happy. Yeah, but okay. uh, but like I said, when you like, when he hits the club, he's it, all he's all going to be cheers. Right. When you walk into the club, right. When they the D, hey yeah, what's up, what's right. up, yeah, doggy with that. So what difference does it make? Like I said, who would you rather be? Who would you rather? Who most matters to you as the player right there? Right. Who's going to affect how you feel on a day-to-day -day basis? Your girl, your boys, the people around you. The university is still peripheral. Even the coaches are peripheral. Right. So, okay. So and here's the, the loss that they get. Yeah. Four players off of the team, which means include starters, which means they probably will f suffer from losses because they don't have those players on the floor. The ranking of number eight soon will probably go away, and they then flirt with the possibility that they may not get into the tournament the way they were playing at this time. So the only consequence they have of this. That's a big consequence. It's a big one because while you're off field, yes, Mario, I agree with you. Absolutely. You're going to get those pats on the back. 
But when you get ready to go play against that team and all of a sudden those same fans who are looking patting you on the back and you guys start losing well, real badly what, will turn on you and because they're you second. Sure, because they're you <laughs> Right. So that's it. You know, that's, one thing on the way before we go out, because it's somewhat related. Any word on the why the UCLA player, what was actually his infraction that caused the UCLA play player to be recently uh, removed from the team. You, you're talking about uh, Nelson. I can't remember right. his name. And for number well, number of conditions: bad attitude, absent, late, redundancy in that way. I didn't read all the details, but I know it said it was just a part where they say there's a you don't get it. You come in late. <laughs> you keep coming in late, and you go okay. This is detrimental because you have to set the example. That's all I heard so far, and he's gone. So you know how it is. So it's a sad thing. That's my new news sports, man. I'm out. All right, everybody. That's Victor Allen's new news sports, written, directed, and produced by Victor Allen, the man that the ladies call sexual chocolate. Tune in Monday through Wednesday for Victor Allen's new news sports. <laughs>